Minneapolis crews are busy trying to tackle some spring cleaning of graffiti. WCCO's Reg Chapman tagged along with a man who is making it his mission to keep the city beautiful. Graffiti, it's almost everywhere you look. All wanted expressions of art defacing city property. Just like there are signs of spring popping up everywhere. The sound of spring cleaning of graffiti can be heard across the city. Shante Hill is a one-man crew working to beautify Minneapolis. Take a picture first, show what we're cleaning. We've already came over and repainted, so usually we like to try to clean it first, but sometimes it doesn't come off, so we have to paint over it. Hill says most of his day is directed by calls from residents asking for a cleanup. It's, it's all about you see it, do it type thing. I'm in the neighborhood, got to work with it right there. Might as well come over here and get this one out the way too before that would get called in. Hill says crews become familiar with the names of some of the taggers. He says it's pretty much the same people most of the time. As soon as we clean it up, they, they're back out here putting it right back. It's almost like a cat and mouse game with them, you know what I mean? He uses state-of-the-art equipment. Product we, we call um, elephant snot. So we'll I'll put that on there, I'll scrub it a little bit. It needs to sit in there so it can really soak into the concrete, pull that, that paint out, and then we'll power wash it. Clearing graffiti off of the highway system is the responsibility of MnDOT, but they say it is not a priority. MnDOT says its main focus is to keep the highway safe. But for city crews, their job is constant, one tag at a time, cleaning up to help keep Minneapolis beautiful. Reg Chapman, WCCO News. A unique neighborhood that was designated to be destroyed in the 70s has instead survived and triumphed. Minneapolis neighbors paved the way for the idyllic area that it is today. Milwaukee Avenue is now on the National Register of Historic Places. WCCO's Jennifer Merrily takes us down the pedestrian only walkway for a lesson in history and the story of why it's still standing strong. Along Milwaukee Avenue, you'll find people walking and biking and neighbors greeting each other. It's quietly nestled in one of Minneapolis's oldest neighborhoods. Milwaukee Avenue is right in the center of the urban tapestry of Minneapolis. The heart of the historic district is the people who live in the 45 Victorian homes with the uniform porches, fretwork, and steep pitch of the gables. People like Connie Fournier. It's my soul. It really is. I mean, this place is my soul and uh, will always be. And Judy, who lives down the block. It's our little piece of paradise. Originally built in the late 1800s by a developer looking to maximize profits, says neighbor Diane Richard. So the original idea was, what, to put a lot of people in a small area. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's what developers do, right? They try to figure out the best way to make a buck. The renters who lived here, mostly immigrants, Norwegians were told, and working class families, some who worked on the nearby Milwaukee Railroad. Railroad. I don't think anybody came here thinking, like, this is going to be a gorgeous destination. And that's changed. <laughs> it has changed. This neighborhood feels like it's from a different time. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. It's one of the many things that worked out about it. Bob Roscoe is in large part responsible for saving the neighborhood and transforming it into what it is today. Sometime in the early 1970s, the Minneapolis Housing Authority thought, uh, let's just get rid of all this stuff. They want to tear everything down. By the 1970s, the homes were in disrepair, some boarded up and condemned. But Roscoe and a group of community organizers saw something along the narrow two blocks no one else did. We didn't quite call ourselves hippies, but other people did. And I think we thought that this was a cause worth developing. I maintain we had imagination and they didn't. Roscoe literally wrote the book on the urban renewal. With a background in architecture, he and other visionaries developed the future of the area. We didn't look at historic preservation as a goal right away. Uh, we looked at it as uh, saving the neighborhood. They did rescue the neighborhood and protected it by getting Milwaukee Avenue on the National Registry of Historic Places. It was later designated a historic district in Minneapolis. This is what makes this neighborhood unique, is I these homes so. across from each other without a road in the middle. Right, yeah. I think having a green space like this, that's what I give myself 
a lot of credit for. <laughs> it took time to rehab the homes. Some were demolished and replaced with historic replicas. Others were lifted, basements added. And newly married couples just out of college, like the Fourniers, poured their lives into the restoration. It took a year of a lot of hard work and love and a lot of help from a lot of people. Inside her home today, it's open and airy. You were given the liberty yeah. to create your own interior. Exterior design had to remain the same. Because the outside and the inside feel very different. Yes. This would be modern and yeah. the outside historic, which, sure. is kind of, which is kind of neat. Judy and her husband also moved in decades ago and kept their home close to the original layout. It's kind of uniformity, but with an individual taste. You feel like you, you belong, but you can express yourself. Bringing neighbors together and preserving the architectural integrity was all by design. There's just a really lovely legacy that is serendipitous. I think if this area speaks to you, you really want to be here to protect and defend it and enjoy it and share it. On Milwaukee Avenue in Minneapolis, Jennifer Merrily, WCCO News. That's our show. We hope that it lifted you a little, maybe even inspired you to do some good. You can see more of these heartwarming stories every week on our Sunday morning show at 7 o'clock on WCCO TV. And if you have an uplifting story, we'd love to hear from you. That's how we get some of our best stuff. Submit your ideas to WCCO.com uplift. Thank you so much for being with us, friends. We'll see you next week.